I would like to talk to you today about the real reason the Jews killed Jesus. I'm going to be showing you from the New Testament. Okay, now before I get started, because I know which way this thing will go, this sermon is not anti-Semitic. Okay, uh, no more than if you would be a person that takes your car to the garage and your mechanic says to you, hey, there's a few problems with your car. That doesn't mean that he's a racist and that he's trying to eliminate you or something else. Um, I am not an enemy of the Jewish people. I am an enemy of sin. And my Bible is written by the Jewish people, or was written by the Jewish people, and this book is not really against the Jewish people. Um, it's saying there are certain sins that they do, and those sins are rebuked, but there, nowhere in this Bible will you ever see in a complete elimination of the Jewish people. Nowhere. Uh, there's actually quite a few prophecies for the Jewish people in the New Testament, which I will be going over today from a very unique per, uh, way of looking at this whole thing. And those prophecies ultimately end up in a very good thing for the Jewish people. All right. But to get there, there needs to be some rebuking of sin, not Jews, but of sin. Please understand that. All right. I don't hate you just because you're Jewish. So drop the little racist thing. I know it, it's used to a lot of effect by some of the Jewish people out there, but it doesn't work here because I'm not against the Jewish race. First, th First Thessalonians chapter 2. Turn there in your King James Bible. Um, and I'm going to show you that the Bible does teach that the Jews killed Jesus. Okay, now obviously they conspired with Rome, Fifth Kingdom, Rome being the iron, and the Jewish people, the mingled Jews, I should say, being the miry clay. Um, proven from Scripture. I have the studies to prove it. You can watch those other videos. I'm not going to go over all the Scriptures here. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 says, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Okay, Jews, context there. Verse 15, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. All right. Um, very true. Okay. That's just accept that. That's what the Bible teaches about you. And if you say, well, I, that New Testament is such an anti-Semitic book. You might want to read the Old Testament sometime and see some of the things God did to the Jewish people because of them constantly leaving and worshiping idols and false gods and whatever else. Okay, the Bible itself is fairly hard and rough on the Jewish people. And that should be something that you appreciate. Not something that you, you know, play wounded woman and start going around and, I'm being persecuted, I'm being persecuted. Just be quiet and listen to what's being said. Because it comes from a place of love, not hatred. All right? Love doesn't mean positive all the time. You go to the mechanic, the mechanic says, hey, you better get this oil changed here or you're going to have a major problem with your motor. He's saying it out of love. He's trying to be nice to you. You go to the, do the doctor and the doctor says, hey, I'm starting to see some swelling in the back part of your throat there. It looks like my coming down with something here. Give you something to take that away or whatever else. I'm getting a fever here or you can see some irregular heartbeat or whatever else. They're saying it because they care about you. All right. Now, I'm going to show you there are seven different prophecies, indirect kind of prophecies given by the Lord Jesus Christ uh, about the Jewish people. And I say indirect because Jesus was rebuking the Jews of his day, saying, this is the sin that you're guilty of. But he's also showing this is the sin that they're going to be doing up until the time that I come back. They're rejecting me right now, very clearly. But I'm going to show them their sin now that will continue on until the second coming, all right? The fulfillment of all the messianic prophecies and the new covenant that's brought in. The new covenant is not in right now. Again, please watch my study on that. I go through all the scriptures. Well, I'm not going to battle it out in the comment section with anybody. The new covenant comes in. The Lord takes away the sins of the people of Israel. I don't think that's true today, okay? There's a lot of sin over there in that nation. A lot of sin wherever the Jews are, dispersed in other countries. Uh, he didn't take away their sin yet. All right. Okay, the New Covenant didn't come in. The New Covenant and the New Testament are two different things. The New Testament happened with the death of the testator, Hebrews chapter 9. All right, the New Covenant comes in later. A lot of these new versions that come from the Vatican, they will say they'll change New Testament to New Covenant. 
Very serious uh, doctrinal error, extremely serious. But I'm going to show you there are seven things I have listed here that the Jews were guilty of in when Jesus was on the earth. And Jesus rebukes them for it, knowing that they're going to continue this system because it's how they would build up to this ultimate end times evil, which I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be doing three studies today. All three studies will transition into a, one another. This is the first one. The next one is going to transition into this one, uh, into kind of what I'm developing in this study. And then the third one will finish it off. It'll be a three-part study. <coughs> um, so number one, um, I have seven things listed, like I said. Traditions over Scripture. We're going to go to the verses here and look it up in a minute. Number two, religious hierarchy. Man-made hierarchy. Which is funny because the Jewish rabbis of today actually teach that the Messiah that's coming is just a man. A mortal man. It's not God that's going to come down, even though that's in the Old Testament. That God would come and walk among the people of Israel one day. In the flesh, it's in the Old Testament, but the rabbis won't tell you that because they don't know the Bible. They'll study the Talmud and the Zohar and all these other you know, traditions of men and overthrow the scriptures with those traditions of men. Number three, God versus mammon slash usury. Uh, the Jews have been very guilty of that down through the years, and they, a lot of these rabbis just readily admit to it. Yeah, we use usury. Sure, you know. That's why they've been kicked out of so many countries. It's not because the people are anti-Semitic and hate Jews. It's because they get sick and tired of being taken advantage of financially. And again, it's not proper to say the Jews all are involved in usury because they're not. I'm sure that there are some Jews that are not involved in it. So, which is part of the problem with true racist ideology where people actually do hate the Jews, anything Jewish, and they just, oh, they get all angry and, and hateful. Well, you're condemning a whole race of people based on what a few of them are doing. And that's not the right thing to do. Uh, number four, the Jews in Jesus' day, they questioned his education. Same thing that they'll do. They're, you can watch my video on the thing of the disgusting Talmud and whatever, the, what the rabbis are trying to keep away from the people. And you see it all the time in there, questioning my education. Because I bring up something that's written in their book plainly evil. Oh, you're not educated enough to understand what that says. They did the same thing to the disciples and they did the same thing to Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. We'll get to the scriptures here in a, in a couple minutes. Number five, a Jewish kingdom that they set up themselves without God on the earth. Um, another thing there. Number six, the wheat versus the tares, pure versus false. Okay. Um, We'll get into that. That's another thing that's going on, another big problem with what is called Jewish. Uh, a lot of people realize that. There's all sorts of different things and movements and people that came from this country and they're not really Jews, they're not ethnically Jews, and these people say that they're Jews and you have conversos and you have all this other stuff. It's a mess, total complete mess. We'll get back to that here in a little bit. And number seven, you have the fifth kingdom being destroyed, that Jesus Christ warned them about he's prophesying out into the future so let's go to matthew chapter 15. i remember seeing a video a number of years ago there was a i've uh, rebuked this guy um different times on my channel rabbi mordecai Kraft, and um ashkenazi jew he calls himself and he did a blasphemous video where he attacked jesus christ and said that jesus was basically a false prophet and he only ever gave one prophecy in the entire new testament <laughs> i thought oh uh, no jesus gave gave quite a few prophecies all right i don't know if the video is still up or not or whatever else but um yeah um let's start out here matthew chapter 15 we'll read begin in verse 1 and this is where we're going to be talking about the traditions over scripture See, they were doing it back then. They had their Talmud and things of some of their Babylonian traditions that were being formed. And of course, it went after the New Testament was written. They were still coming out with things, these different rabbis and coming up with all sorts of descriptions. And, and I think that this verse means that. And I think we should do this. And, and all these things, these standards, these doctrines of men, just like the Roman Catholics do with their uh, catechism. You know, that right there, catechism. Uh, and you have Islam, they, they have their different holy books and things that are 
contrary to the scriptures. And so you have, you know, professing Christianity with Roman Catholicism. They overthrow their, the doctrines of God with their own commandments. The Jews do it and the Muslims do it. You can watch my uh, video, uh, The Devil's Trinity of Evil Religions or something, I think it's called. But um, I can prove it more there. Again, you know, this fast food Christianity, um, I just have a few minutes to watch a video here and whatever. That's not, you're not going to learn anything. Okay. It takes many hours of going through the scriptures, being firmly grounded in sound doctrine. A lot of people don't get that. But uh, Matthew chapter 15, beginning in verse 1, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Not the Bible, the tradition of the elders. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Notice the distinction there. You're, you are transgressing the commandment of God by your tradition. All right? That's what these false cults do. And then they say, if, if you say, well, I don't agree with that, well, you're not educated. You know, you're just kind of stupid. No, you're coming up with standards. I mean, if I told you that in order for you to be uh, keep your subscription to this channel, you have to wear a uh, black uh, plaid shirt like what I have on here, black and gray. You say, I thought it was red and black before. You know, the buffalo, buffalo plaid uh, <laughs> shirts that I used to usually wear or whatever. Oh, well, that's yesterday. Now the new doctrine is out now and it's black and gray, you know. Would you want to be part of something like that? I would hope not. But see, that's what these traditions of men do. Uh, for centuries, we believe this way. Oh, and then some rabbi or priest or imam or something comes out and says, I had this amazing revelation, or pope, you know, not just a priest, but I had this amazing revelation, and now we'll all start doing it this other way. You know, there's big controversy within the Roman Catholic Church over the saying of the Mass. Should it be in Latin or English? And for a while, you had the trad cats, the traditional ones, and they're saying, you know, it has to be in Latin, only Latin, you know, and, and well, okay, you can do it in Latin. And then it was, well, you probably shouldn't do it in Latin. You're alien, alienating people. And then, yeah, pretty much you need to stop doing it in Latin. Their doctrines are changing, you see. The commandments of men will change with time. But the scriptures are a sure foundation. And you say, well, that's what the Bible says. I mean, I can look at my belief system as far as being a Christian, I could get in a time machine and I could go back at any time throughout church history from now to the first century, any time and land. And if I could find some Christians, we'd get along. We would. We might have a few little issues and differences or whatever else, but pretty much we'd get along. I could go back to an 1800s revival right now. Some, you know, Dwight Lyman Moody or or, you know, J. Wilbur Chapman or one of these old, old time preachers and up there, they're up there preaching. I can relate to what they're saying. I would, you know, put on some clothes from back then. I'd think the same way. Meet a family there or whatever else. And, and uh, they'd say, where are you from? And well, I'm just traveling, you know, back in time, <laughs> just traveling. And, oh, hey, why don't you come over to our house? I'd feel just as comfortable there as I would today. But the modern churches, the modern Christians, well, I just can't relate to those Christians in the past. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're overthrowing the doctrines of Scripture by your traditions. And it's so funny because the modern Christians will call you a Pharisee if you stick to the book. They do it all the time to me. Oh, you're a Pharisee. You're a Pharisee. Because I hold to the standards of Scripture. Oh, that makes me a Pharisee. No, that makes me a Bible-believing Christian. And you're overthrowing the Scriptures by your tradition, by your feelings, by your beliefs. That makes you the Pharisee. That's how this thing works. Okay, and by the way, uh, just for all the, the little silly atheists out there, Jesus didn't even know about cleanliness. I had this in the comments one time. Jesus didn't know about cleanliness. And I say this to give it to you out there, my, my uh, viewers. So if you ever get this, you know how to answer them. So, you know, the disciples are just eating. They're, they're coming out of the fields and their hands are dirty and they're just eating and they didn't understand germs. Well, we won't get into the whole thing of germs and the train theory and all that stuff, but <clears throat> um, uh, that's not what it was about. Okay, it was about ceremonial washing. 
doing all this stuff to be seen of men, the Pharisees. I'll bring over the bowl and the, and you know they put the thing on here and they, you know, pour some water over my hands, please. You know, okay, ceremonial, give me the towel and what that's what's going on there. It doesn't mean don't wash your hands before you eat. <laughs> you know, Jesus didn't even know about cleanliness before you eat. He was very much aware of that stuff. Okay, it's talking about ceremonial washing. Just to get that out there. Okay, um, <clears throat> verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. That's what they do. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me. Look at that. You'd say, oh, come on, you're, not, you're trying to tie it into the modern Christian church. In vain they do worship me. What do the modern churches do? They oh, we're worship service. Oh, we're worshiping the Lord. <laughs> Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's what it is. Um, we need to be like the world to win the world. I didn't recall reading that in Scripture. I read that we're not to be conformed to the world. Romans chapter 12. I didn't read anything about being like the world to win the world. Well, Paul said that when in Rome, it be as the Romans. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Um, that's not him saying, I'm going to make myself into a Roman. Okay? He's saying, God put me through all these different things so that I can witness to different people. That's what he was saying. Not that, oh, in order for me to, uh, to witness to the woke crowd, I'm going to have to look like them and act like them. No, that's not at all what's going on there. But let's continue. Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. This defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest that thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not yet... Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. See, here you have these Jews back there in the first century, these Pharisees, they're bringing all their Babylonian traditions in, foundation for the Babylonian Talmud, and all this other witchcraft type of stuff that they get. And they're, they're going around and they're saying, you know, we wash our hands before we eat. Look at this ceremonial thing that we're doing. And Jesus is saying, <clears throat> okay, uh, in your heart there are evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. And you're worried, you think that you're somehow holy though because you've ceremonially washed your hands for everybody to see uh, I don't think so and again these modern churches see I'm not just ripping on you know the Jewish system I'm ripping on modern Christianity as well here because anybody that adds things that are not in the scriptures you are condemned you're not supposed to add to the scriptures over and over again there are many verses in the Bible that say that you're not to add to it but you come up with your own little feelings and your own little pet doctrines and whatever else that you want to put into your system of belief and then you can just kind of ignore what the Bible says in other areas. See, that's what's going on. <clears throat> you know, the, the other thing here about the verse that says about um, verse 17, Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth into the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? <clears throat> I remember many years ago um, down in Pennsylvania we had a family get together and my cousin she had one of her boys, and and um, and he was just really little. And there was a daddy long legger spider, you know. And he was walking along, and the little boy goes over and he's looking at it, and he goes whoop and grabs a spider and pops it in his mouth. 
and chews it up and swallows it. And she's, no, 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 no. You know, just, I mean, yeah, we were all kind of, ah, oh, you know, yeah, you don't want to do that. But too late, he ate that thing. Did it kill him? No. Uh, did that mess him up spiritually? No. Um, if, you know, eventually it probably came out in his diaper, you know, see the remnants of the spider or something come out there or whatever, you know, digested, I, I would imagine. But uh, that didn't defile him. That's what Jesus is saying there. He's saying this. I'm not talking about things that are physical. Because if you eat something, it will just come out the drought, go through the system and out the other end there. What defiles you is what evil things you have in your heart. And then he lists the evil things right there. Verse 19, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Uh, did the Jews in Hollywood, do they have evil thoughts? And again, that's it's a fact. There are a lot of Jews in Hollywood, movie producers and things like that. Murders. Hello, Hollywood. Uh, do, they, do they like to depict murder all the time? Mm-hmm. Adulteries. Fornications. How about thefts? A lot of Jews are very guilty of that. Not all of them. Not all of them. Hopefully you're not part of that if you're Jewish. False witness. Blasphemies. Things that the Jews say about Jesus Christ. Things that the Talmud says about Jesus Christ. Hmm. Interesting. A little prophecy there for the present time, but also for the future. Next, let's go to Matthew chapter 23. We'll look at religious hierarchy. Guilty of it in the day when Jesus was walking around on the earth and still guilty of it to this very day. <clears throat> I mean, you look at the, some of these rabbis and whatever else and the people just, you know, bowing almost to them and whatever the most high esteemed, you know, reverend, holy, you know, super whatever, super duper <laughs> uh, rabbi so-and-so. Yeah, whatever. Uh, sinner. Just like other people. Matthew chapter 23, beginning in verse 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, because they're too busy investing in the stock market. <laughs> but all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries, and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Interesting, because after Jesus rises from the dead, uh, Mary sees him and she says, Rabboni. She calls him rabbi. So Jesus is the only rabbi that you should be worshiping and serving. <clears throat> Verse 9, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. So see, it kicks the Catholics again there. So don't get so... Uh, offended and whatever else if you're Jewish out there that how dare I speak these things against you yeah, the, this thin skin thing with the Jews is really sort of a there's something wrong there okay uh, very wrong and it's funny because if you want to talk about being persecuted and whatever I remember being a boy and I went to New York the one time not into New York City thankfully but there was a area and uh, out in the Catskill Mountains I think it's been so long ago, I don't even remember the name of the area, but there was a family from the church building that I was raised in that went there as missionaries, and there were a lot of Orthodox Jews in the area. And you talk about rude people. Those people were so rude, treated us like we were dogs, you know? But you're worried about, you know, people saying anything bad against you? Please. Verse 10, toughen up a little bit, okay? Because Jesus isn't just kicking the Jews. Okay, he's also kicking people to call a man father, you know, like the Catholics do. Um, verse 10, Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. 
But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So Jesus Christ is teaching that there shouldn't be hierarchy within circles of people, mere mortal men. Now he's God manifest in the flesh, and him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Bible says in Colossians 2.8. Uh, and again, I've proved it over and over again. Jesus Christ is God. All right. He's not, it's not modalism or oneness that he's just God and he shape shifts or something like that. No, there's three parts to God. Okay. Body, soul, spirit. Man is made in the image of God. All right. We have a body, a soul, and a spirit. All right. So Jesus Christ, when he, the, all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily, that means that he is the body of God. The father is inside as the soul and the spirit is there as the, the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Now, that's what the Bible teaches. If you don't understand that, well, then please get saved. You're missing out on some really deep, profound truth. Um, and don't try to tell me you're a Christian if you don't believe in the Godhead doctrine. All right? If you don't believe that Jesus is God, um, sorry, you're not saved. Because if it was just man's blood that he shed on the cross, well, then that couldn't pay for anything. Okay, number three. Um, God versus mammon slash usury. Matthew chapter 6. Um, the Jews had a big problem with this in the day that Jesus was on the earth, and they have a very big problem with it today. A huge problem with it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break, th break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy, high, there, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. One thing that you'll learn when you read this Bible, both Old and New Testament, is you will see that there's always a problem when people start going after money. That's why 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. What was it that got King Solomon messed up? Money. The money is what corrupted him. If he didn't have lots of money, he wouldn't have had a thousand wives, and then the strange wives turned his heart against the Lord. That wouldn't have been there. If he you know, would have been just a simple man and whatever else, you're not going to attract 1,000 different women. All right, The strange wives wouldn't, come, wouldn't have come to him. But again, Jesus is rebuking the Jews of his day, these people that held the traditions of men above the scriptures, these people that had religious hierarchy. And they're using this system. They're starting to get in bed with Rome in terms of business. And I've been studying the thing of you know historical economics and whatever, and you get into the thing of usury. The Jews have been the biggest practitioners of usury out of all ethnicities of people. They've done it in every country that they go to, and that's what gets them in trouble over and over again. And the Federal Reserve, a lot of the guys on that board, Paul Werberg, was a Jew. These are historical facts. Right? It'd be like saying that, you know, um, somebody starts saying about uh, Hitler was an evil man or something. Why should I get offended as a German man, a descendant from Germans? I mean, my family was here in America. We weren't part of the Nazi movement in Germany. But what I'm saying is, I'm not going to get offended if somebody's ripping on Hitler. But the Jews have been trained to be so thin skinned that you say something against Paul Werberg. He was a Jew. As soon as you say Jew, oh, 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 you're anti-Semitic. Oh, shut him down. We should report him for hate crimes or something. You're very weak-minded if you report people for hate crimes. Okay? Very weak-minded. You're not very sure of yourself. Because if you're actually very sure of yourself, you, you say, you know, whatever. People can have their own opinions. He's not threatening me personally. I'm no threat to you if you're Jewish. You understand that? None at all. I don't want a Holocaust here. I've warned about a Holocaust here with the alt-right trad cat system and whatever. I've tried to warn the Jewish people. I want to see Jewish people go back to Israel, the land of Israel. All right? 
That'll be the third study in this little series here. Um, but, you know, the Jews have a problem with money. They have a problem with usury. And if you have this problem, if you're worshiping mammon, you can't worship God. It's just that simple. Jesus said that as a rebuke to them, and it's turned out to be pretty true. And I, I mean, study history. Again, you know, you can disagree with me or whatever else, but you, you can't disagree with the facts of history. Unless you want to live in some kind of little magic bubble world where you can just kind of make up your own truth and you can reject what's been there for, you know, thousands of years. The Jews have been involved in mammon worship, usury, all right? And therefore, that's why they're apart from God. Not all Jews, not all, <laughs> okay? Um, <clears throat> next thing that they do is question his education, okay? It's happened to me numerous times. I bring out the thing on the Talmud. I just, all the video was, I said, we just got these things. I opened up the one. I saw it, just turned right to it. Just flipped open, grabbed one of the volumes, flipped it open randomly. I can't believe this. Made a video. Said, I'm going to check into more of this stuff, what the Talmud teaches. I've had people over the years challenge me. Have you ever read the Talmud? You know, and I, no, I haven't. And so I thought, well, I'll eventually get a copy of it. That's what I did. Okay, that's all. I'm not claiming to be a scholar or an expert on the Talmud or something. I just simply said, just grabbing one at random and opening it up and looking at it. And I thought, whoa, okay. And some of the stuff that's in the Talmud, I've been looking at it, you know, in, in my spare time, which is not a whole lot of spare time. But some of the things I'm coming across is, I just read it and I think, what? <laughs> this is so unscriptural. And when I see that, I'm, I'm angry at the Talmud. I'm angry at the wicked rabbis that have turned their back against Jesus Christ. I don't hate the Jewish people. But, you know, as soon as you get the, the, the ADL and some of that stuff, you, you say anything negative about, you know, the term Jew, and all of a sudden, oh, they're going to pieces, and we have to report him and shut his channel down, and oh, we have to stop this. It could lead to another Holocaust. Uh, or it could lead you to some Jews getting saved. That's what my hope is. Next one will be the uh, question is education thing. Luke chapter 20. <clears throat> I already said about that. Luke 20. You know, why well, wish you would just teach the, the Bible, Brian, and just stop having to go over and, and attack this and fight that and whatever. If I was just a nice guy and all I ever did was just preach the Bible and uh, whatever. And th this channel been, would have been shut down a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> Paul, in Acts chapter 20, he wrote about how that he ceased night, not, night and day to warn people in tears about false prophets and things like that. That is part of the ministry that you have to do. If you don't understand that, well, then I feel sorry for you. You're probably going to some modern church someplace with some skinny jeans wearing sissy, you know, hireling up their pastor, you know, and who doesn't upset anybody and everybody loves him and he's just wonderful and you know never gets people riled up or anything then you come here and try to make me like that i don't think so i love people too much you see i'm not going to deceive you by good words and fair speeches and understand a lot of what i'm saying here it's lining up with scripture by good words and fair speeches they deceive the hearts of the simple you know i'm quoting verses i'm taking parts of verses and making it part of my speech because I believe that there's power in the Word of God. But people that are completely ignorant of Scripture, I just don't think he smiles enough. And I don't think he's, you know... Eh. <laughs> Luke chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. Let's read that. And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders and spake unto him, saying... Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things, or who is he that gave thee this authority? <laughs> it's one thing to do that to me, okay? I trip up in my speech, and I'm just, you know, country bumpkin, hillbilly, whatever you want to call me. Um, not the brightest guy out there and whatever else. Okay attack me hey denley you're stupid i don't like the way your beard looks or something you wear too much flannel whatever but they're doing this to god god manifest in the flesh the lord jesus christ 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6. Walking around God, the Creator. By Him were all things created, and by Him all things consist. Their life is literally, they're, they're, being, they're staying alive by the guy that they're questioning. He's giving them breath. He's giving, keeping their hearts beating. He's reading their thoughts. And they come up to him and they say, by what authority do you have to preach like this? <laughs> oh, it's one of the most amazing things that you read in Scripture. You know, tell us, you know, are you licensed? Do you have a PhD? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, verse 3, And he answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing, and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then believe ye him not? But and if we say of men, all the people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. And they answered that they could not tell whence it was. And Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. I love that. Um, what authority do you have to be saying these things, uh, Brian Dunlinger? Um, well, okay, I'll give you a question. This book, is it of God or is it of men? Well, uh, if I say it's of God, then I'll say, why aren't you using it? Uh, it's of men, then why do so many people use it and believe that it's of God? And why is there power here? And why are you watching my videos, psycho? <laughs> you stalking me? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Such a funny thing, you know? If the King James Bible is a man-made book, then why are you constantly watching the videos on this channel? Don't you have something better to do? <clears throat> Let's go next to uh, John chapter 7. And if you say, well, the King James Bible is, is of God, then, then why don't you live that way? All the modern Christians out there. A little bit of a problem. And you say, well, I, I, I can't tell. You're trying to trap me. Okay, then I don't need to tell you by what authority I do these things. Just like my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, John chapter 7 verse 14 through 19. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? <laughs> oh, it just cracks me up. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. All right. Jesus, of course, is speaking as God in the flesh, perfect, sinless man. Sure. Um, I can't say that there's no unrighteousness in me. I'm still a sinner, saved by grace. But, you know, in some ways, this is supposed to apply to a real preacher. A real preacher doesn't seek his own glory. I say King James Video Ministries is the ministry name here, not Brian Denlinger Ministries or something. I don't do that. Um, I try my best to stay as humble as possible. Uh, I don't have multi-million dollar buildings or some big church building and Pastor Appreciation Day and all that other stuff. I don't want to be worshipped in some building someplace. That's why I'm here, trying to remain as humble as I can. I mess up. Sometimes I get prideful. Sometimes my flesh acts up and whatever else. But I'm trying, trying to give God the glory. But again, look how they treated Jesus. The Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? God manifest in the flesh, and they're questioning his education. But I'll show you how they do it to uh, the servants of the Lord. Go to uh, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. The Bible says here, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You see, one of the most beautiful things about being an uneducated preacher, 
uh, where I don't have PhD or THD behind my name or something like that, or THM or all the other stuff, is when there's a blessing, there's the fellowship of the Spirit, you know that it had to come from God because I'm not smart enough to come up with this stuff on my own. So uh, there have been, I mean, I've lost track you know, thousands of times that I've seen this thing where somebody says, I was just studying that exact portion of scripture and I was wondering about that. And I prayed and said, Lord, what does this mean? And all of a sudden I'm laying it, you know, while you're praying that over in another country or over across the United States or something, I'm in bed or just doing something. And all of a sudden it's this bing little, you know, message comes into my head. Yeah, you know what? That's interesting. I think I need to go get my Bible and I go and I get it and I look and I should probably do a sermon on that. And I do a sermon on it and two days later, you know, it's up and on YouTube and somebody goes, I prayed about that just the other day and that's exactly what I was thinking. I, I wonder, that's really interesting. Yeah, how you tied it in with that scripture? I didn't think about tying it in with that scripture. and There it is. Wow. Yeah. Um, when they perceived that they were Denlinger is unlearned and ignorant. They took knowledge that he has been with Jesus. I am proof that Jesus is real. Because I'm not smart enough to come up with this stuff on my own. Okay? Give glory to God. Don't give it to me. People come up, oh, hey brother, I really love your videos. Praise the Lord. That's, you know, my way of saying, well, thank you. I appreciate that. But uh, praise the Lord. Give him the glory. That's the way it should be. But the Jews? Well, <clears throat> you can't speak Hebrew. And actually, the King James translation is not a very good translation. It gets different verses and error and everything. Uh, well, the Lord sure used it, you know, with its errors. Well, the King James Bible is not an error. Okay. Uh, you can play that little translation game thing all you want to, but the fruit is born from this book right here. Hundreds of years of uh, fruit produced. Now let's look at the next one. Number five, the Jewish kingdom. Matthew chapter 21. And this is what the Jews are working towards. You listen to their, listen to a translation of their national anthem. The, I forget what the thing's called, Hadikva or something. I forget. Sorry. But um, they're talking about the hope of Israel and that they, you know, one day we'll see the Messiah and the hope of Israel. <laughs> Well, you will see the Messiah. He's coming back, but, uh, you know, he was there in the past, which I'll be showing you here in a little bit, another one of the studies. But they're trying to build this kingdom. And right now, you have a lot of Jews that are coming out and they're saying, you know, we're going to go to war with Iran and we can go to war with Lebanon and Syria and, you know, Yemen and all these other countries. And, you know, our God will help us to defeat them and we're eventually going to control all the world through our banking financier stuff and our Hollywood media and we're just going to integrate with as many people as we can and blend our seed with their seed and and mingle and, and it's just going to be this whole huge big thing and we'll have Noahide Gentiles and we'll have all this other Torah observance and you know Sabbath keeping and all these other things and you know and control the world without Jesus Christ that's what they're trying to do right now and they were trying to do it back in Jesus's day let me show you. Matthew chapter 21, verse 33. Let's see about this. Uh, here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. Okay, let me stop here. For, need to make a little point. Verse 35, The husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Three. Hmm. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. And again, he sent other servants more than the first. And they did unto them likewise, other servants, the minor prophets. Amos, Obadiah, you know, all the others there. Daniel. Hmm. Then he sent his son, who is Jesus talking about, 
talking about himself. Let's keep reading. Verse 38. But when the husbandmen, husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. Cast him out of the city on the hill of Calvary and slew him there. The Jews killed Jesus. All right. Um, verse 40. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes? Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Which is where I get in. Gentiles. Um, we bring forth the fruits. You know, with our English Bible, hmm, the greatest book that ever showed up on this earth, the most printed, most published, most circulated book of all time is a Gentile printing of the Hebrew Old Testament and New Testament. Interesting, isn't it? Hmm. We brought forth the fruits. Verse 44. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. You have to fall on Jesus Christ and be broken. have to realize that you're a sinner, which the modern day Jews, a lot of them, they reject that. The rabbis and things like that, they reject that they're sinners. They have kind of this weird Masonic esoteric belief that we're not really sinners and God's just kind of okay and he doesn't, you know, condemn us for anything. And Not of the Lord. You have to be broken. You have to understand there should be a broken, contrite spirit there. I have sinned against God. I've sinned against heaven. I need to I need to be saved. I can't get into heaven by my own good works, by my keeping my different traditions, or even if I try to do the Old Testament thing, I can't get into heaven like that. I need a perfect lamb, the one that was slain, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That's what you need. Verse 44, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. All right? Again, the prophecy back in the Old Testament there. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Hmm. Interesting, because Islam, they consider Jesus to be a prophet and nothing more. Uh, no, the New Testament teaches that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Not a trinity. No, he's not a trinity. Not one of three persons or God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. No, that's not scriptural. God the Father is in scripture. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, not in scripture. Okay, you have to understand that. Very important. You're missing a lot of truth if you don't get that. But again, you'll see this thing there. That uh, they're saying, we want to seize on his inheritance. What is the inheritance? Read Psalm 2. That's where the inheritance is there. God, the Father, is going to give his son the inheritance of ruling this whole world. Millennial inheritance. It will be coming in the future. I'm going to be part of that kingdom. Looking very much forward to it. Uh, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Uh, no more rock music in the stores. No more filthy ads and cussing people, and all the other stuff. Really looking forward to that kingdom, believe me. Okay, next let's go to Matthew 13. The wheat versus the tares. Another one of the things that Jesus said um, as a rebuke of the Jewish people in his day, but also understanding what they would be doing in the future. Um, Matthew 13, beginning in verse 24. Let's read that. One page back here. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? 
He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right? Um, wheat and tares. Different seed there. Um, what did Jesus Christ say to the uh, Pharisees in John chapter 8? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. There, is, there are people that are this, this thing called Jew or Israel, people in Israel or Jewish or Hebrews or whatever, all the stuff in the comments, a lot of you people just make me, you know, get very frustrated. You give me a headache. Uh, not really because I am in pretty good health now and I don't get headaches as much as I used to. But <laughs> thankfully, it's a nutritional thing in other words. But symbolically, spiritually speaking, you give me a headache. Okay, I mean, there are no Jews. The Jews are the northern tribes of, of uh, England and Europe and whatever else. Um, well, the, the church has replaced Israel. Um, they're Ashkenazi. They're Sephardic. They're Khazar. They are this and that. and all. Um, I understand that what is called Jew nowadays, okay, today, all right, and in the Bible here too, um, it's a mess. And why would I say that? Oh, because Jesus Christ said it. The wheat and the tares. Um, should we separate? Should we get the tares out of there? Um, they're not all Israel, which are of Israel. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. Should we root the, the tares out? Should we get them out of there and show who the real Jews are? No, wait till the time of harvest. And that time is coming in the future. Okay? Again, I mean... Oh, I, I believe that the, all the prophecies of Scripture were fulfilled in the first century. Well, then you have a real problem because um, the Lord didn't separate the Jews in the first century. Okay, they're still there. They're mingled people and there's ruling with, you know, Roman Catholicism and the miry clay, the nation of Israel working together. You don't have to believe it, but whatever. And, of course, you have, you know, the mingling of the Jews. You know, it's also not just religiously, spiritually, but you also have physically. And you have people intermarrying and whatever else. What tribe are you from? You know, well, I'm not really sure. On my mother's side, second cousin, cousin removed, I think there was somebody from the tribe of such and such or whatever. Uh, what a mess. Um, and finally, the fifth kingdom is destroyed. Luke chapter 20. Let's go there. So the Jews today, they look and they say, well, uh, the one prophecy that uh, Rabbi Mordecai Kraft, this, well, Mordecai Kraft, I shouldn't even call him a rabbi. Uh, that's a title that's given. Um, if you look that up, you would see, you know, Rabbi Mordecai Kraft. But he said that uh, this thing of that uh, one stone shall not be left upon another, shall not be thrown down. And he said, the whales, the wailing wall's still there, the foundation for the temple. Uh, no, actually, the foundation for the temple was in the city of David. It's not there with the Temple Mount thing, the Temple Mount. It's not the Temple Mount. It's Fort Antonia, the Roman fort. So when the Jews go over there and they're, they're doing their thing and they put their head against the wall and they're doing their, the prayer thing and they put little envelopes in, or little pieces of paper in there or whatever else, um, uh, that's a Roman fort there. That's not the temple, the location of the temple. You'd know that if you studied the scriptures, but the rabbis try to cover that up to try to make Jesus look bad. And um, that's going to bite them in the end. Uh, Luke chapter 20, verse 17, uh, down through verse 26. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder, like we read earlier. Verse 19, And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him, and they feared the people, for they perceived that he spake, he had spoken this parable against them. And they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, uh, that so they might deliver him under the power and authority of the governor. <laughs> like a lot of you are doing out there. 
you come here, you feign yourself to be a, a viewer of this channel to try to find something that I say wrong or whatever else so that you can turn me over to the YouTube Goonie authorities and whatever to get my channel deleted. Huh. Almost like Jesus was condemning certain sins that they were doing then and he knew that they would continue doing them out into the future. Talk about the ultimate uh, prophet. I know what you're doing right now and what you're going to continue doing for the next 2,000 or so years. Only God can do that. Verse 21. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. They're lying to him. They don't believe that he you know, uh, is like that. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? We'll get you in some kind of an anti-government little sting or something like this, and we can turn you over and get you in trouble. But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a penny. Whose image and superscription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer and held their peace. I hope that you uh, hold your peace about me. I hope that you, uh, if you're Jewish out there and you don't believe in the New Testament and you hate the concept of Christianity and Jesus Christ, you don't believe in Him and whatever, have a little bit of grace. Understand that I don't agree with you. I'm not trying to destroy you or uh, make a holocaust or anything else or whatever. No, I'm just going with what the Scriptures say. And uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, um, you're never going to talk me out of faith in Jesus. Ever. Uh, I had another spiritual encounter this morning where a um, some kind of a evil spirit or something manifested and I saw it and it was very frightening and it was the name of Jesus that I used on it and it went away. I got out of there in a hurry and um, I've had that happen a number of times and I've been serving the Lord Jesus Christ for a long time and I know what the name of Jesus means and I understand um, how people hate the name of Jesus. And I understand that, you know, the scriptures, what they say. Um, you know, there's an old hymn, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Um, I've lived that song, that hymn. Um, just to uh, take him at his word. I've, I've proved him o'er and o'er. I was thinking of another part of the hymn. I've proved this book to be true so many times. I've seen it in my own life, the change that it's made. I've seen it in the lives of my viewers. I've seen people who uh, have gotten straightened out, gotten their lives back. Um, you're never going to convince me that this book is false. And all that you have is a bunch of dead traditions of men. That's all that you have to offer me? No thank you. Um, well, how about living a life where you don't have to believe that you're a sinner and don't have to believe that you need a Savior? <laughs> That's a good thing? <laughs> no. I understand very well that I'm a sinner, and I understand what my Savior has done for me and continues to do for me. <sighs> Not very smart. But um, seven prophecies that Jesus Christ gave that were all unique to the Jews of his day and to the Jews going out into the future. He knew what they were going to do. He knew what corruption they would be part of. Um, gave them the diagnosis. And for that, they killed him. They didn't like that very much. And it's kind of ironic because I gave you seven prophecies, judgment slash prophecies that Jesus gave. And um, what the Jews, the nation of Israel, what they get in the book of Revelation is three sets of seven. Hmm. Uh, one for each member of the Godhead that they wronged. Uh, they worship God in vain. There's God the Father. They crucified the Lord of glory, Jesus Christ. And they lie. They blaspheme the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit. 
So you get three different parts of the Godhead, and each one gives you seven judgments. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. And it's all to show you that the New Testament is real. The Jews require a sign. We'll be talking about that here in the next study. And um, make sure to tune into that one. <clears throat> so that is going to be it. And uh, do hope that you've learned something from this study. It's been something that was you know, in my mind and the Lord was putting different ones in my mind. And sometimes it just comes at the weirdest time. That's why I carry in my back pocket, get in my back pocket here, this little notebook. And I have so many different walk and talk sermon notes, things in here. And, you know, right there's a couple of them. And, you know, uh, just all of a sudden, oh, you know, it comes to me and let me get my pencil out. And I carry a pencil in my other pocket over here, kind of a little carpenter's pocket on my jeans that I wear. And I get my pencil out and I'm writing things down, you know. And, and a lot of times, you know, we'll be talking as a family and I'll go, oh, hold on a second. Everybody be quiet. <laughs> and I'll get, I'm getting a transmission from the Lord, you know, and I write something down, you know. Um, and it's all fake. No, no, it's not. Uh, so, but this study was one that I would get little snippets of it and then it'd be, oh, I have to go someplace or we have to do this or do that. I have to go to the store, I have to go, you know, whatever. And, oh, I should have written that down. You know, sometimes I don't get a chance to write it down because I'm too busy doing something. <coughs> and then it's hard to get, get it back and whatever else. So, finally got the study done and uh, have a whole bunch of other things I'm studying right now and researching. Um, <clears throat> going through the Talmud stuff as I can and um, just praying about what the Lord wants me to bring out. But uh, to conclude the whole matter here, this is not, again, I will say it again, it's not a sermon to just bash anything, anyone called Jew or Jewish or Hebrew or whatever else. And um, I'm so glad that so many, and many of my viewers out there are so intelligent, so much more intelligent than me. And, oh, well, you've come a long way, Brian, but you need to study these issues more. Wow, I'm so blessed. I'm so you know humbled to have such intelligent people that know so much more than I do, you know, <laughs> and just always trying to put me down and, you know, question my education like they did with the Lord and with the disciples. You know, you're wasting your time in the comment section, okay? I appreciate suggestions. I do. I'm open to constructive criticism. Constructive criticism. But when you're just trying to bash me and tear me down and whatever else, go watch something else. All right? So that's going to be it. And uh, next we're going to be doing a study called Satan's Ultimate End Times Deception. And I'm going to be proving some interesting stuff with that study too. So that will be it. Thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.